Welcome to Faith Life Church. I'm Pastor Gary. Great to be with you today. Yes, and I'm Pastor Drenda, and we want to encourage you yes, to keep do. the positivity. When situations look tough, there's challenges all around us. God's Word does not change. Nope. The Word of God says that, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health as health. your soul prospers. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. And you've got an exciting message today. We have a lot to cover today and a lot of great news. Good news is good news, right? And uh, before we get into that, Drenda, you mentioned that scripture where it talks about prosperity, living with provision, and the need for healing. And guess what? We have both in the covenant. And uh, in regard to, to prospering, you know, God has given us laws that pertain to his kingdom that help us prosper. And these laws are not affected by economic times. Amen, You're right. able to, to, you know, bob and weave and God's able to move you and to give you new ideas and give you changes that will outpace the, whatever the economy says. Uh, you can prosper in the midst of all kinds of ways, different problems, because God's with you and he's ahead of the curve. He knows what's happening. And in any situation, Drenda, there's always an opportunity. There is. As always. a matter of fact, last night, we got to go food from Italian. Yeah. And there were all these people it waiting. Out. It was packed in the parking, parking lot. Parking lot was packed. And so this <laughs> yeah. business owner was smart and they were able to do even more business than they normally do. So be listening to the Holy Spirit. That's but right. the word of God says that the enemy is rebuked from your that's, finances when you tithe. Good. Yes. It's the law of the tithe, right? The law of the tithe is a law. So get a mental note. It's a law for your benefit and it rebukes the devourer. It, it stands between you and what you grow, what you build, what you're economically doing in the earth realm. It puts a barrier. It's God steps in between the devourer, Satan's mm -hmm. kingdom, and you have that freedom to grow inside that fence, I call it, with assurance and confidence and have the benefit of the tithe. And Drenda, we have a lot of people joining us today that probably may not have been here before or giving online is new because obviously we're not here in person at mm -hmm. our, our facility. So I think we need to review just to kind of tee yes. that up so they understand what is going to happen down yes. the road here in service. Yes, we want to encourage you to give in faith and whatever platform you're on today, there is a way to give there. You'll see a button, just do what it says to do, follow through with that, prepare yeah. your tithes and offerings as you would normally do and you can give online and as a church, we are giving to the community. We are also yes. taking calls and praying with people and reaching out and helping to fund those who are in situations. We are doing all all kinds of things. So what you're giving today is going to continue to minister to the community. And as you push those buttons, follow through, you're still going to be able to continue to listen to the message. There's a powerful message from Pastor Gary today, yeah. but we want to encourage you also, before we get into yeah. the message, that we are online, we're doing encouraging things, we're doing giveaways, things that you can listen to all and week. build your faith. All, all yes. week long at yes. 12 o'clock, we have uh, a get together, a brief 10 minute faith build up moment, if you will, just kind of a, a boost for the day. And that's, that's a lot of fun. And we just want to be there for you and to help yes. you uh, keep your mind focused on what the word says. Yes. Yes. Say my, keep your mind on him. The Bible says, and you'll stay in perfect peace. And so as you're getting your uh, re offering ready for us to receive it today, we're going to speak over that offering because we're releasing it by faith. For those of you that are new, you may not know, but we believe when you mm -hmm. give, it does rebuke the enemy off of your finances so yeah. that God, can bless what you are doing, the work of your hands. So we always speak over the tithe. We do it as a family. We encourage you we right declare. there in your home to declare we over declare your tithe. Over the word of God, speak yes. over the word. Speak the word of God with us mm -hmm. over your tithe. Release your faith with it. We'll now, do that. as we teach today's th this message for today, I mean, you may be filling this out later or at the end of the message or sometime during this process, you might want to fill that out on your iPhone or iPad. But I want you to lay your hand on that right now. Even though we're going to pray over it, even though you yes. may not have actually finished all that yet, I want to pray over that because giving is a key. It's a law. And right now we need the law of God operating in our life yes. as we hear all kinds of stuff around us. So lay your hand on that uh, device of whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, desktop or wherever you're giving at, just lay your hand and agree with me and the word of God. The Bible yes. says, given it shall be given back to you. There are no qualifications for that. It says, given it shall be given back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running yeah. over. As a covenant believer, you have the promise from Jesus himself that as you 
support the kingdom, as you are involved with God's business, which is people, that he's going to make sure that you you have a return on your giving that you can give again. He's always going to take care of you. So in the name of Jesus, we sow today, Father. We believe your word. We We know that your word is above anything we hear in the media or any virus or any anything that stands against what we might consider a normal life right now Mm -hmm. because you are our life you are our prosperity Mm -hmm. and we receive from you in the name of jesus amen 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 we release our faith with you and speaking of prospering and being in health you're going to talk about being in health we're going to talk about some things today let's, let's have a great message thank you all right grab your bibles if you don't have it grab your bibles and i'm going to pass this off to to you guys real quick So I have more room up here. Thank you. And uh, so get your Bibles out. Uh, We're going to talk about uh, healing. And we've talked the last three weeks uh, about the power of God and who you are in Christ, what rights you have, the authority Jesus gave you. And we gave you three examples over the last three weeks. We talked about, uh, of course, Pastor Amy healed of that 13-pound tumor instantly. Uh, We saw people that had MS. We had a woman who had MS healed. We had uh, another woman, Pastor Tim's wife, Alicia, with a tumor that uh, was threatening her life healed. And so we want to, of course, give you actual examples of the power of God because so many people in the world today think these things have all passed away, that uh, Jesus was here, but he's no longer here. And that the, the church has no power and there's nothing visible that shows us the reality of Christ. My friend, that is not true. Everything you saw Jesus do on the earth, he is still doing today. And so I want you to just to give me a few minutes of your time because this is can be life or death. What you believe, what you speak, is where you're going to head towards in life. And I want you to be speaking the promises of God and anchor yourself to what God says. So we're going to begin today in a scripture out of Psalms 103, 1 through 5. And let's read that together. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I like that. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Your emotions, your thoughts. I am going to praise the Lord. Uh, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forgot, forget not all of his benefits. That is what we need to have today. Forget not all of his benefits. I'm going to praise the Lord because there are benefits being in his kingdom. And I'm going to remind myself today of those benefits, right? Who forgives all of your sins. That's awesome. He heals all all of your diseases. In fact, just stop with me and say, he heals all of my diseases. Just say it out loud. He heals all of my diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit. Now this is talking of hell, the pits of hell. He's taken you out of Satan's dominion and set you in his kingdom with all these benefits. He crowns you with love and compassion who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Friend, this ought to get you encouraged. The Bible says, Praise the Lord, O my soul. That's your inmost being, your your emotions. I'm going to praise the Lord because I'm reminding myself of his benefits. He does not change. He's the God of all creation, the beginning and the end, no respecter of a person. And if you know him, if you're part of his kingdom, these are your benefits. If you're not part of his kingdom, if you say, well, I don't know who you're talking about. I'm not sure the church I used to go to, they didn't talk like that. Listen, if you've called on the name of Jesus, that's all it takes. The Bible says whoever calls on the name of Jesus has the legal right to be part of his family and these benefits. All of these benefits are yours simply by calling on the name of Jesus today. So let's take a quick scan of Jesus's ministry. Let's just take the book of Matthew and let's watch Jesus for a few moments. How did he handle himself? I'm gonna cover a few scriptures very quickly and then we'll come back and talk about it. But in Matthew chapter four, verse 23, it says this, Jesus went out uh, throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom, not the good news of religion, the good news of the kingdom, healing, every disease and sickness among the people. News about him spread over Syria and people brought to him all who were ill of various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures, the paralyzed, and he healed them. Matthew chapter nine, verse 35, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease 
and sickness. Matthew chapter 12, 15. Aware of this, Jesus withdrew from that place. A large crowd followed him and he healed all who were sick. Matthew 14, 13 and 14. He withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and he healed their sick. Matthew 14, 34, people brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick people just touch him, the edge of his cloak, and all who touched him, all who touched him were healed. Matthew 15, verse 30, great crowds came to him, bringing the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others. He laid his hands on them and he healed them. Matthew 19, 2, large crowds followed him and he healed them there. Matthew 21, 14, the blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. Friend, do you see a pattern here? The Bible says he healed them all of every, and every disease and problem. He healed them. He healed them. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, I wish Jesus was here right now because I sure need some healing or I need something to help me with this fear of being sick. Listen, Jesus is here. You know, Jesus is here. Now, he gave that same authority to the church. Ephesians chapter 2 talks about you and I as we come to Christ. It says this in verse 6, God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms. Now think about that. Where is Jesus seated at? The Bible says he's seated on the right hand of the Father. And we're seated with him. Think about that. We're seated with him. We have exactly the same authority that Jesus has. He has given it to us, the church. Matthew 28, 18, he says this as he's sending the disciples out. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now, previous to his resurrection, he had authority in heaven, but Satan had dominion in the earth realm. Now he says, all authority has now been given to me in heaven and earth, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. Now he has deputized us, given us his authority to act on his behalf, to take the good news of the kingdom into the nations and declare the freedom from captivity and the good news of the kingdom. James tells us, the New Testament church in chapter five, and again, I'm going through scriptures quickly. We'll talk about it. I'm just giving you a flavor of what the Bible says. What is your legal right is healing. Is anyone sick among you? This is James chapter five. Is anyone sick among you? This is written to Christians. Is anyone sick? Are you in anyone? I'm in anyone. Are you in anyone? If anyone, if anyone is sick, if anyone is sick, let them call for the elders of the church to pray over them, anoint them with oil in the name or the authority of the Lord Jesus. And that prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they'll be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So here we find that James says, if anyone is sick, they can call for the elders. Now, again, you can call for the elders. Sometimes when you get sick, you get, you get discouraged. And so sometimes what he's saying here, call for the elders, the prayer of faith, will help you. It'll come and undergird you. Because let's uh, admit it, sometimes when we're sick, the circumstances begin to overwhelm our mind, the pain, the, the circumstances we're dealing with. Hey, the Bible says, call for the elder, call for your pastor, call for someone to agree with you that has faith, understands the covenant, understands what the word of God says. Agree together in the name of Jesus that you have this covenant of healing. Now the oil mentioned here is not like a, a magic formula. It's like, oh, I need the oil. The oil is symbolic. It's simply reminding you of the power of God that's coming upon you as you pray and you're receiving it. So as that anointing is simply saying, this anointing, the healing anointing is now coming upon you to bring deliverance and healing. And the Bible says, if the person has sinned, because sin opens the door to the enemy, essentially stepping out of the kingdom's dominion, you can make a, a mistake and step over into Satan's territory. And even if you feel like you may have not been living right, if you've not been, you know what, pastor? I don't know why God would answer my prayer. You know, I've, I've got some issues in my life. I'm still working through them. This scripture's for you. The Bible says, you call for the elders no matter if you feel like you have some things you need to clear up with God, you clear them up right now, but when we lay our hands on you, 
The Bible says you'll be forgiven and you shall recover. You shall recover. Mark 16 says this, we as believers lay hands on the sick and they, help me out now, they recover. Are you getting this? Are you understanding that healing is legally yours? Jesus called it the children's bread. And so why are we not seeing this, Pastor? And I agree. Why, so Pastor, why are we not seeing, if this is true, and Jesus went around healing all, and he gave the church the authority to heal and the power of God, the Holy Spirit, to heal. Pastor, why are we not seeing this? Why are we, across the, across the churches of this nation, we're not hearing these stories. We're not seeing this happen, um, maybe occasionally, but very rarely do we hear and see this happening. I'm glad you asked the question because that's what I want to talk about today. Why isn't it happening? And I want to help you answer that question so you can receive. And you need to have an answer for this question. You need, you need to know and have an answer and understand why these things aren't happening so that you understand how they do happen. Of course, most people today say this has passed away. Healing, the power of God has passed away and that was just for the time of Jesus. But now it's all just about going to heaven. You know, praise God, Jesus did say that is the most important thing, going to heaven, being born again. But God wants still heaven to be brought into the earth. He wants the captive set free. He wants the, the, the sick healed. He wants his will as the king of this kingdom. He wants to bring his kingdom into the earth realm so people can enjoy the benefits of his kingdom. He's the king. The kingdom is a government. When you call on the name of Jesus, you are translated, moved out of the dominion of the kingdom of darkness into God's kingdom. And he wants you to have all these benefits here on the earth for a couple reasons. Number one, people will see the goodness of God. They're going to be saying, hey, wait a minute. I need some of that. You know, in Isaiah 61, it says that we are a, uh, a people of God. We're a, a planting, you know, a, an oak of righteousness, a planting of the Lord to display his splendor. That means that the church, we as believers, are a picture of what life is supposed to look like, what it looks like in heaven. That's what the Lord's prayer says. As your will be done on earth, as it is in heaven, is what the Lord's prayer prayer says. This is what people long for. This is what they ache for on the inside. They're looking for what they want. They think, you know, what life's supposed to look like. They're looking for answers. And we, the church, are to be an example of what heaven looks like here in the earth. And the Bible says we will shine like bright lit stars. And in darkness, of course, stars, you don't have to look for stars. They look for you. Basically, you just look up and you can't help but see them. And that's what God wants his church to look like. So I'm talking about the power of God. We just went through scriptures. Healing is obviously part of God's kingdom and is yours in the New Testament church. Again, why aren't we seeing that? Again, I said so many people have been taught, taught that these things have passed away. So many people have been taught a, a character assassination of God's character, basically. God kills people. God is the one that brings the sickness. God brings the cancer to teach people. Uh, he uses sickness as a tool in his arsenal of training people. It's something, it's from God. And so we have a lot of problems, a lot of issues, why people are struggling to even believe it's possible to be healed. But we're gonna talk about that today. So again, have your pencils and papers ready because as we're teaching, this can literally change your life and maybe you know someone who's sick, it can save and change their life as well. Now, the scripture I'm going to share today is Matthew 17. Basically, we kind of laid a foundation, but really what I want to talk about is Matthew 17. So I'd like you to turn there with me. In Matthew 17, Jesus has taken his three top disciples, Peter, James, and John, up on top of the mountain uh, where they had some time in prayer. He left the other disciples below to minister to the crowds that had gathered around and were needing minister to. But he comes down off the mountain and he finds a commotion. And uh, there's a, a big fight kind of a commotion going on between his disciples and some people there. We find this story in Matthew 17, verse 14, starting in verse 14. So let's pick it up. When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy, underline that right there, have mercy, underline that, have mercy on my son. 
He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. All right. Now, traditional religion would say, I guess God chose not to heal. I mean, obviously God has the power to heal, right? We know God can do anything. And the fact that he didn't, he must have chosen not to. Now, there's a lot of things we need to mention quickly in this passage, but let's move on down through here. Jesus then says to the group, oh, unbelieving and perverse generation, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy and he was healed from that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? That's a wonderful question. <clears throat> that question also gives you a proper perspective. Why couldn't we drive it out? It should have come out. Why? Do you know most Christians don't ask that question? They assume, as I just said, that it was God's will that it didn't come out. They don't ask why, because they're not convinced it was God's will to come out. They wasn't, they're not convinced it was or is God's will to heal. They don't ask why. They just say, well, God didn't do it, so it must be his will. But the disciples are in training right here. And so they ask Jesus, they've seen demons come out many times. They've watched Jesus heal many people. But in this case, the demon didn't come out. So they said, why couldn't we drive it out? He said, because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for God. Is that what it says? It doesn't say that, does it? It says nothing will be impossible for you, for you. Now, this story is rich in information that we need to apply to how we receive healing, how we receive from God in general. You see, most of the church leans to what we read earlier. The father was frustrated. The demon did not leave. And the dad came to Jesus and said, have mercy, you know. And then he goes on and begins to explain uh, the, the problem. He throws himself into the fire, you know, and all this. He, you know, he tries to pull on the sympathy or empathy of Jesus, which is unnecessary. Jesus knows all about this issue. But the fact he had to do that was because there was no authority there. Let me say it again. The church lives a life typically of begging. Most prayers, if you hear people pray, sound like begging. Trying to convince God, God, you know, you know, you, you know the situation. I did this, I need this, I, you know, I've served you, I need to heal. There, if you follow, listen to prayers, people try to convince God that their situation is important, it's eminently needing help or whatever. It's like we need, you know. Then they go into a long discussion of trying to convince God why he should move. Now that's crazy stuff, that's crazy stuff. But if you really believe that God is moved by that, Christians say, well, okay, I need, I need to receive from God. I know I'll fast for 50 days. I know we'll, we'll pray for 24 hours. All of that is good, I can fast, I can pray, but let me ask you this, if I drop this Bible, you know what's gonna happen, don't you? It fell and it's gonna fall every time. I don't have to feel anything. I don't have to understand a whole lot except that the law of gravity causes this book to fall every time I drop it. The problem with believers is they believe that God is making a case by case decision on his word. But you have to remember he's the king of a kingdom which is governed by his laws. They don't change. In fact, the Bible says God is the same yesterday, today and forever. And his laws don't change, but that's the problem. People don't understand that this is a law. Healing, how you receive is a law, not a feeling issue. So in Mark chapter six, there were people that were sick in Mark chapter six that Jesus, the Bible says, could not heal. Now that shocks you probably, right? If I asked you, uh, just met you on the street, said, hey, do you know that in the Bible it says Jesus couldn't heal people? You go, where, where are you coming from, bud? God can do anything. Jesus healed them all, right? I mean, they would agree that God could, but Mark 6 says he couldn't. It says he could not heal them. And then it explains why, unbelief. So we have to have an understanding briefly of what held that up or what allows that to happen. And this story gives us 
some great things. So Jesus identifies what I believe are the two main points that are going to hinder people from receiving from God. And in this case, today's lesson, receiving healing. And he says right here that unbelief, verse 17, he says, Oh, unbelieving and perverse generation, how long shall I put up with you? He identifies the two key points of why people do not receive. And so we need to talk about these two points today to make sure that you understand them and that you can receive what you have need of. So let's define our terms. Unbelief, what is unbelief? Well, obviously that's pretty simple. You don't believe. Believe what? You don't believe what the king says. You don't believe what the word of God says. You're believing something else. You're believing something. You're just not believing what God says. Now, believing what God says is simply what we call, the Bible calls, faith. Faith is being convinced of what God says. In fact, in Romans chapter 4, verse 18, talking about Abraham's faith to, as you know, receive a child, Isaac, when Sarah was too old to have babies, Obviously, that was by faith, and it says there that Abraham was strengthened in his faith, gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he said. So a definition of faith would be this, you being fully persuaded of what God said in spite of circumstances. Now, you say, Gary, why is that important? Well, it's not only important, it's absolutely critical that faith exists. And so people tell me all the time, well, why can't God just empty a hospital? You know, why can't he just send angels to knock on doors and preach the gospel? Uh, because he can't. It's illegal. If you remember right, Adam gave the earth realm over to Satan back in Genesis. Adam had that authority. He ruled the earth on behalf of the kingdom of God, but Satan deceived him out of it. And Adam and Eve literally chose to follow Satan rather than God. When that happened, they lost their position in the kingdom of authority to rule over the earth realm, and Satan has then been called the God of this world. That's what he's called, the prince of the power of the air, the God of this world. And so God lost his ability in the affairs of men to legally come in there. So to make a long story short, God sent Jesus. Jesus paid the price to make it legal again that God's spirit could now fill men come back into the presence, come into a man and woman and fill them with the spirit, give them the authority to bring his government back into the earth realm. Now, so let's talk about that. Unbelief, faith. So faith is being fully persuaded and receiving from God is a jurisdiction issue, meaning that heaven can't invade earth unless a man or woman on the earth believes what God says and if God can find that person full of faith, believing what he says, it gives heaven legal jurisdiction through that person to bring his will into the earth. And so if there's no faith, as we saw in Mark 6, Jesus could not heal them because of unbelief. Why couldn't he heal them? He had the power to heal them, but there was no agreement with heaven which made it illegal. Why didn't the demon come out? You have to be able to answer the question here in Matthew 17. Why didn't the demon come out? He didn't have to come out. You say, why not? Because there was no faith. There was unbelief. And so heaven had no legal jurisdiction to, to enforce heaven's will in that situation. All right, so unbelief is a key factor in most people's lives. Number two, I believe the biggest factor, really, even bigger than unbelief, is perversion. You say, well, what, do you, what is that? The enemy, Satan, has perverted the concept of God's character in the earth realm, where people think that God brings cancer to people, where God does bad things to people, that God is untrustworthy. Who would trust God? And so if you have a perverted mindset that God can bring cancer, you're never going to believe him. So let me, let me say this. In, in a, 2 Peter 1.3, there's a scripture there that I want to touch base on. It says this in verse 3, 2 Peter 1, 3, and 4. God's power, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. That means living life as God designed it. Through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. 
circle, goodness, goodness. Now through these, his glory, his power, and his goodness, his character, he has given us his very great and precious promises. But listen, if you don't think God is good, and if you don't think he is going to be trustworthy, if you think he gives cancer to people, you're not going to believe his promises, right? You're not going to believe what he says. You're not going to trust someone you don't trust. So essentially, in the Garden of Eden, Satan said to Eve, did God really say? You see, he played that card of perverting God's character, which opened the door for unbelief and Adam and Eve being deceived and to give up the kingdom of God's authority. Now, in the same way today, most of the population, unfortunately, even I would say the majority, no, a lot of Christians have been taught that God allows, you know, God does bad things. And so those people can't receive from God because they have a faulty perception of, of distrust. So when they pick his word up, they don't have this concept, wait a minute, God does not lie. He is good. I can trust him above circumstances. Man, this is my rock. I'm gonna hold on to this because they have been taught to doubt what God says, taught to distrust anything that God's about. And thus they cast aside his word because they can't receive his promise. So Jesus said two things are hindering these people, especially this father, from receiving the power of God to deliver his son. Unbelief, number two, perversion. Perversion would say all demons don't have to come out. I guess this one didn't come out. That's perversion. Demons come out. Well, God didn't heal this person. I guess he doesn't heal. That's perversion. God says they lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It doesn't say they might recover. It says they shall recover. And so perverting the word, diluting it down with unbelief is the key areas that Satan brings to deceive the body of believers and the world out of the good news of the kingdom. This is vital. Now, I'm going to suggest that you change how you think. Let me tell you a story. How, how did I become convinced? You know, I had to learn a lesson. There was a season when I was basically paralyzed. I woke up in the morning and I was shocked. My arms and legs were paralyzed. My face was numb, my tongue was numb. And uh, you know, I was like, what is going on? And of course, fear tried to come over my mind and I was uh, un unable to function. And so through a journey, beginning to ask God, I knew his word, I knew his word said healing, but it wasn't coming. I mean, we went through a couple months, I'm praying God, you know, I know what your word says, I know what your word says, uh, but why, you know, I'm, I'm struggling and it, it got really bad. I mean, I couldn't leave my house. Uh, I was on panic attacks, antidepressants, and it really, really was torture. It really, it really was, it was hell on earth, it was horrible. Did I enjoy that? Of course not. Would I have liked it to stop soon? Sure I would but something was blocking it. I knew what God said. I could quote the scripture, but something was blocking it. I, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't get it. And so we went to a, Drinda and I went to a meeting where they uh, had prayed for people for healing. And so we went there and the gentleman who was the uh, evangelist prayed for me and the power of God came on us, came on us very strong. The anointing was so strong, I couldn't even stand up. I just, they had to carry me and drape me over a chair. Just, I was, out, the power of God was just strong. So after a season, about 30 minutes, I got up and kind of staggered up the aisle and walking out of that church there. And you know what is puzzling to me because I, the power of God is all over me, but I still felt sick. I still had the same feelings of being sick as I did before. And I was perplexed by that. Well, that night as I went to bed in the hotel, I still felt the presence of God, but I was still felt sick and I was confused. In the night, God gave me a dream, and the dream was very simple. He spoke to me in my dream, Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Now, I didn't know where the text was at, but I heard the words, therefore, when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have it. I woke up quoting that, going through my mind and my spirit. I told Drenda, I said, Drenda, God spoke to me in a dream, and he said these words, therefore, when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have it. And she said, oh, that's, that's Mark eleven twenty four. 24. So I got it out, we looked at it, and I began to think God is trying to tell me something. What is it? I, oh, of course, I remember that scripture now, I, but he's, what, is it, what, is he trying, what is he trying to tell? Therefore, when I pray, believe that I receive, and then I shall have it. Wait a minute. Therefore, when I pray, believe that I receive. 
then I, shall, then I saw it. I saw it, I saw it, I saw it. I had been waiting for my healing. I had been waiting for my deliverance, like it was a future event. God was saying, no, no. Therefore, when you pray, believe that, believe that you believe, faith, believe that you receive. When you pray, then you shall have it, right? I got it. I said, wait a minute. God's telling me I have it. Even if I feel sick, I have it because he said I have it. He doesn't lie. I have it. I am healed. And so we, at that time in my life, if I even sniffed sugar, any kind, my, my hormones were so whacked out that I was afraid of eating any carbohydrate. It would just throw my body into almost like a convulsion, a panic attack. And I literally was afraid, steer clear of that stuff. But there was a root beer stand down the street that Drinda and I knew about. We'd gone to it many times in our college days. And uh, so I said, you know what? I really like that root beer. <laughs> let's, go, let's go down there and get some of that. And so we went down there and they had two sizes, the big frosted mug and then the small frosted mug. And they said, well, what would you like? I said, now take the, I'll take the big one. And so I remember to this day taking that in my hand and Drenda standing next to me. I look at her, she looks at me and she says, I believe you're healed. And I said, I agree, I am healed. And I drank that, man, that was the best tasting root beer I ever had in my life. That was so, aw so awesome. And uh, it was so good, I asked for a second frosted mug, big one of root beer. I drank both of them with absolutely zero effect. I was completely normal and completely healed. And God taught me that day, what faith really is. See, when you listen to people that are sick, here's how they talk. I believe that God is going to heal me. I'm putting my confidence in God. But very rarely do you hear them say, I am healed. I am healed. Why? Because God said I'm healed. He cannot lie. I am healed. It's legally, it's finished. I am healed. And so God taught me that, like on that mountain, perversity, wrong character view of God, unbelief, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm fully persuaded that God has the power to do what he said, and if he said I'm healed, then I'm healed, and that's what faith sounds like. If you're fully persuaded, how do you sound? You know, if you're fully persuaded, you sound pretty persuading. That, no, I am. I, I have it. I'm, it's over. I got it. I'm done. I mean, I have, yeah, I'm, 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 I have it. You don't have to make yourself say it. You don't have to say a religious slogan. You don't have to go through religious exercise. You don't have to just tell yourself to say it. It's a fact. You are, I have, this is what I am. Faith sounds persuading. I am healed. I have that. I am prosperous. I'm not, not trying to become prosperous. I am prosperous. I have what I need. Not trying to obtain it. I have it all. I already have it. And this is what faith sounds like. And so I want to encourage you to align yourself with what God says. Begin to speak what God says and allow the word of God to bring agreement in your spirit. You might need a perception change. That's just, I don't know where you come from. I don't know what you've been taught. But listen, I want to encourage you what does God say about it? Be open to a change. Now I have a picture here, this is interesting. If we can put on the screen, this is the picture of the, the NASA picture of the Hubble telescope took of the galaxies. An amazing, as a kid I had a telescope, so I, I always loved astronomy, but in this picture, the Hubble telescope took this picture. There are 10,000 galaxies in that picture. You say, well, what did they aim at? All right, here's what they aimed at. If you took a square millimeter, okay, one millimeter square, you know, a millimeter, and a square, you know, just a square, a millimeter, 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 that's pretty, pretty small, and you set it out at a meter's length and saw it, that is the space that that picture consumes of our space. Not much, just a dot, and there's 10,000 that they can see now, 10,000 galaxies. Interesting though, it was 1923 before mankind even realized that there was a galaxy other than ours. Crazy, right? 1923 wasn't that long ago and they did not know that there were galaxies. They just knew we have a galaxy. You know, we live in a galaxy, Milky Way. 1923, not long ago. Now we go ahead, 100 years, we find this to be the fact, which will be proven wrong down the road, I'm sure, that there are 200 billion to 2 trillion galaxies they're estimating within our 
visible range? Probably not. I would say they probably go farther than that, right? The point I'm making is get the facts. I mean, find out. Be willing to say, wait a minute, I may not have it right. Be willing to come to the Lord and say, hey, let's just, let's you and I sit down and talk about this. Let's, let's talk about this. You know, I may have a wrong perception of your character. I mean, the Bible says that creation declares the glory of God. Well, I go out at night, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know about you, but I'm overwhelmed. When I see a flower, I'm overwhelmed. When I study the cell, I'm overwhelmed. When I see a baby born, I'm over, I mean, I'm overwhelmed of creation. And I cannot see any explanation that these things just happen by themselves. They are too complex, too detailed. God is good. Creation is beautiful and it's good. So friend, wherever you're at today, I wanna encourage you that God loves you. He's not mad at you. He wants you to enjoy his kingdom. Freedom from fear, healing, having provision, having life as he says it should be lived in the kingdom is yours. You say, what do I have to do? I already told you at the beginning of this this message, whoever calls on the name of Jesus has that legal right. Not a religious thing, not a church thing. It's just you and God thing. Whoever calls on the name of Jesus, and you can do that, it's not hard, right there in your home. Whoever calls on the name of Jesus, humbly asking him to take over, to be the Lord of your life, the benefits. And so right now, as we are together, I'd like us to pray. Wherever you're at, across the world, wherever you're at, I'd like to ask you, do you know Jesus? Are you enjoying these benefits? You say, Pastor, I need these benefits. I mean, it's pretty scary. You don't have to be afraid. I've already told you and shown you that the power of God's on your side, that his power is available to anyone, to heal all, to provide for all. And the power of God's not limited by any event that happens here in the earth realm. And so, if you say, Pastor, that's me, I really, I really do want to make a decision. I need to face life with that kind of confidence. I mean, I need to find out how that works. And I would say, you better believe that you do. And it's very, very simple. Now, the, Jesus called it born again. That's not a man-made term. Jesus called it being born again. It's like a brand new start into a new kingdom. It functions differently, praise the Lord. And it works every time, just like gravity. So we're going to pray right now, and I'm going to ask you to do something. However you're watching this broadcast, this message today, either by iPhone, iPad, desktop computer, television, whatever, lay your hand on that. Just lay your hand on that TV or on that phone. Just lay your hand on it. And I want to pray together. From your heart, I want you to say out loud these words. And by the way, on your device, you'll see a tab. You can just touch it. You can agree with this. And we, we know you're there and we have some material we'd like to get to you. But just lay your hand on there. You can tap that button and uh, we'll know you're there. But basically, let's pray together right now. Prayer is simply talking to God and he's the one that's invited you. He's invited you. He sent Jesus for you. For God so loved the world. Now it's not the rock, not the earth, the dirt, the people. God so loved the people on the earth, his creation, that he sent Jesus to redeem them, to rescue them, and bring them out of Satan's dominion back in his kingdom where they belong. So let's pray right now. Say, Father, just follow me out loud wherever you're at. Say, Father, your Bible tells me that if I call on the name of Jesus today, that you love me, that I will receive from you these benefits, that you'll fill me with your Holy Spirit and begin to direct my life and help me understand life and how to navigate these difficult times with real answers. I need that. So let it be recorded in heaven on this day that I called on the name of Jesus. I receive your goodness, your benefits. I now call you the Lord of my life and I'm thankful for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, congratulations. Now, again, if you tap that screen, we have material we'd love to send to you about this relationship, about this kingdom that'll help you understand how it works. But right now, I wanna invite Pastor Drenda to come up and uh, give us a few things that we're gonna leave with, but I trust this has been an encouraging message for you and that'll help you understand how to receive healing. I'm so glad that you encourage people to lay their hands there because I was thinking that I remember as a little girl putting my hand on the television and praying with someone on television. I believe, I know many of you are looking for prayer. Maybe you're seeking prayer for healing today. We have a phone line that you can call for prayer, but I believe we can pray for healing the same way we just prayed. Yes, absolutely. 
Would you do Let's that? Do that. Yes. Let's do that. If yeah, you're sick, you, just lay your hand on that part of the body you're sick or just come into agreement right now and you can receive healing wherever you're at yes. by faith. Yes. God will touch you right where you sit. Go ahead, yes. Drake. Father, we just thank you for the in healing the covenant that we have through Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that by his stripes we were, we healed. were healed. Therefore, we are healed. Yes. And just as Gary shared yeah. today, we receive that as your word, God. And we say, by your stripes, I am healed. Yes. I receive it now when I pray. I believe I receive. We thank you, Father, for your healing anointing yes. right now, touching everyone that's receiving right now their healing. We rebuke yes, sickness we and disease and infirmity according to the word of God by the yes. name of Jesus Christ sickness go, we go and we thank you Father healing flows and to their body is bound yes in Jesus name. thank you Lord yes. healing is yours amen. amen amen also remember what the tithe is the tithe helps stand against what Satan wants to steal so again make sure you take time to praise a family over that tithe and release it in faith Matthew, uh, Malachi chapter three tells us that, and you can stand in confidence that God is for you. He's gonna help you as we give, we yes. receive, and this is important in this day and time. Yes, it is. And we wanna encourage you, if you have children, go to Motion City Studios at YouTube, Motion City Studios on YouTube. Mm -hmm. We have all kinds of wonderful programming and encouraging messages for your children. Today, I encourage you to sit down and laugh and enjoy them with uh, your children. Also. Gary Cassie, Drenda Cassie YouTubes, go to faithlifechurch.org. And would you yeah. share this message today? Share it with your friends, share it social yeah. media, share faithlifechurch.org, the site, because there's lots of tools, lots of encouraging That's words right. there. GaryCassie.com, Drenda.com. All of these places are uh, spots where you can go, others can go to get resources, material, encouragement. And we yes. thank God that we overcome. Amen? Amen. We overcome him by the blood of the lamb. And so the blood of the lamb, Jesus' blood was shed for you, for your forgiveness, for your healing, for your Those salvation, for right. all the benefits, That's for right. your provision. And you are covered Jesus today. Name. And we'll see you every day at 12 o'clock on uh, YouTube. Is it YouTube yes. and face, uh, Facebook? Yes, we're doing uh, so daily we're, updates. We'll see you then. Yes. Have a great week. God bless you. Thank you.